Okay, for uh, color and PW Doppler, yeah, there's quite a bit that can be done here. Let's uh, start off with uh, some color imaging. You can press the color button and you get your box. And so here you have a whole new slew of things you can change to steer left, right, and off. Simultaneous gives you a B mode and a color. Angio is your power Doppler, on or off. And also with your Angio, you get this B flow, where you get the flow in the 2D imaging. I could turn that off. Left, right, inverts the image just like before. Invert, inverts that color. Your color maps are right there. Low flow map five, and you can choose one there. And single, dual, or quad screen. Up, down, B flow, we saw that. Blood flow imaging and blood flow angio are right here as well. And here we have going across the bottom. We have our tissue priority. And what this is going to do is say, do you want more of the 2D image? to appear or more of the color image to appear? Where do you want it to focus its processing? Steer angle, multiple angles here. Scale changes your color scale. Baseline, sliding or hitting the plus or minus and you'll see that that color map changes based on the baseline frequency frame rate if you, if you move the frame rate down you'll get um, higher frame lower frame rate is going to give you higher resolution high frame rate gives you a lower resolution but a higher frame rate compression you'll see how that completely changes your color map make it smoother or higher contrast persistence we talked about that in the 2d Time span, again, that's how much it's going to save there. Uh, sample volume size, put that low for better flow resolution or higher for locating disturbances in the flow. Radial and lateral averaging uh, help reduce noise in the color flow area. Uh, they smooth the image out by collecting data along the same line and try and smooth out the image that way. So if you increase the lateral averaging, it's going to reduce the noise but decrease the resolution. Where you put it lower, you're going to get better resolution but more noise. 2D width, same as in the 2D imaging. Low velocity rejection, that's just like the 2D imaging rejection. It's going to get rid of anything, uh, anything that's a low flow. And then, there, of course, there's acoustic power, just like in the other. You can take that acoustic power down. Uh, you can reset if you made any changes. So let's exit that just by pressing color. Oh, I did not uh, talk about that. <laughs> we can adjust that here. Zoom in. Zoom out. Click set. And it will change the size of that color box. Set again. And you can move it. And again, you can use your finger to move that around. And for pulse wave Doppler, you can start by hitting cursor and getting it here. And now you've got all your uh, angle corrections, your steering angle. You have a quick angle here where you can just flip through and it made it right along there. Auto angle, same thing. It will try to adjust to you, but quick angle. You can just tap that and it's going to scroll around to the popular ones. And so we're at 60. Sometimes if you hit auto angle, it goes above that number. So always watch. It went to 61 degrees when I really want 60. So I've got that with my cursor. You can also do it by pressing the PW. So and when I'm ready to go, I just push PW again. And I've got my spectral here. And across the bottom, we have, you know, our angle correction. Horizontal sweep speed, I can increase or decrease. Angle correction, you know, that's just uh, quick angles. You can go various angles, just slide right along the slider there. Edit. 
Uh, I'll just leave it at 58. Your scale, obviously. Baseline can be moved up and down with your finger. And that'll adjust your baseline. Low velocity rejection, sample volume size, steering angle, um, angle of the pulse wave line. You can see we can make that adjustment too. Trace sensitivity, frequency, and you can adjust your Doppler volume there. And there's a little handy mute button right there as well. Now, I've made a mess of this image here, so I'm going to get out of that. PW again, going back. I'm going to go reselect my probe to go back to the default image. Hit my PW, go straight into my imaging screen. Now, if I want duplex imaging, I'm going to hit the pause button. And if I want to adjust the gain, see I've got my pulse wave Doppler gain there, but I can press this 2D, and that's going to adjust the gain on my 2D image. So you can change the active mode to gain by dragging or using those plus minus signs right there. And so freeze jumped right to the measurements, which we went through over in the measurements. But this is uh, an interesting portion here where you can um, – you could change your horizontal sweep size right there, uh, change your baseline, change the angle correction, trace sensitivity, heart rate cycle. Uh, if you're attached to an ECG or you've got uh, the auto calcs on, so if I had ECGs attached, I could go through this heart rate cycle select and it'll pop up and, and with the auto calc, I can flip right through. And the same thing with cycle select, you can pop through. It's saying it's not, it hasn't, it doesn't have a valid uh, selection. So right now, this uh, help tip is telling me to go uh, select my peak systolic position. Well, I can use this cursor select, and it's going to tell me, give me the end diastolic point instead. So I can use this to do the end diastolic point. And click set, and then I've got my measurements there, and then I can assign that to. I'm going to go with distal. So I've changed probes here to uh, show uh, the tissue velocity imaging a little bit. So in order to do that, you're just going to hit TVI. And you can adjust by tapping the size, tap, and the position, tap. And you can do that up here as well. So in here, we can adjust our 2D gain, higher or lower. Sorry, higher or lower, and the tissue velocity imaging. So now we have uh, our tissue tracking. You can flip that on. Tissue synchronization. And this is also where you can get into your strain and your strain rate right there. And those are the Doppler modes on the GE Vivid IQ. Next, we will get into image review, export, and reports.